Again, like I was saying, we have a lot. We have the sanctioned with bodies here. We have actually, um, right now, we're going to introduce, I'll introduce you, Mauricio Suleiman from the WBC. Um, tomorrow, we have the IBF with Daryl People speaking and John Duggan. So right now, let's, uh, hand, let's applause for Mauricio. Come on up. That didn't make much sense. Good morning. I'm very much looking forward for the tequila tap out in a few hours. I, can, I have a few representatives from Mexico, so be prepared. Um, my name is Mauricio Sulaiman. I am the son of Jose Sulaiman, who was the president of the WBC for 38 years. And uh, I wanted to start by congratulating everyone who is in this room today. To be here in Las Vegas, being in a ballroom with so many temptations outside, and being here with the same common feeling and the same common interest, which is the sport of boxing and also for the ABC MMA. But uh, it is very honorable to see people with a full room discussing the same topics that are interest for everybody. I have the pleasure of knowing many of you. I see many familiar faces. I have worked in some of the states, and uh, I have witnessed how uh, boxing commissioners, uh, we all share the same. We, all, all we want is to have a safe event, to have justice prevail, to see every boxer go home safe, and uh, to make the sport grow. And uh, there are so many different aspects of what uh, people and press do not know about boxing commissioners. I just want to show you, um, I'm going to be talking on uh, some topics. Uh, the WBC was founded 54 years ago. We are a nonprofit and we are made of boxing commissioners from all over the world. We have 165 countries affiliated. Uh, one of them, of course, is the USA. And uh, the USA is one country that has a very different structure from most, if not all, the countries regarding boxing. The USA uh, passed a, a law, which is called the Muhammad Ali Act, which one of those uh, decisions by the law is that no commissioner can belong to any sanctioning organization. That was a point of time that changed the way boxing and the relations with the organizations uh, were in this country. Uh, eventually, it has been moving most of the time sideways or apart. But the, in reality, we are all boxing commissioners as well. Our organizations, we are boxing commissioners. So we do the same. We try the same. And uh, we are here for the same purpose. The ideal world would see a boxing organization working hand in hand with the commissions. We are not in a power struggle. We are not in a uh, contrary side. We're on the same side, on the regulation side. Uh, we do respect 100% the autonomy of each commission. And we encourage to have reciprocity and to have agreements uh, in order to have a, a, an event. The organization comes into place when we go to a state where there's a fight and there's a title that is recognized by the organization. So that's where we, we merge and the ideal world would, would be to see all the commissions and all the organizations working together. There are so many things that need to be unified and to have to be uniformity. Uh, we see this all over the world, and we see this in the United States. Uh, something as simple as a law, I mean a rule, or as complex as medical requirements for a, for a combatant, it's incredible that it's different from state to state to state. So that complicates the matter for promoters, complicates the matter for commissioners, but most importantly, it is a... a situation that puts the danger and the risk on the fighters. So the medical side, I'm very happy uh, to see the structure of the ABC. I'm very proud of uh, Mike Masuli. He has kept uh, open communications, and this convention shows. 
I have been in many ABC conventions, and I'm very, very happy of what I see today. And uh, I can just assure that the WBC and our NABF, which is the, the federation which affiliates the USA, Dwayne Ford is the president. He's here in the room, always in the back. He's a very shy man. And uh, we're just uh, trying to be supportive. We'll be always in support of the ABC and what you all do. And I think it's very honorable. Um, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to touch on few topics. If there is any question, comment, suggestion, or idea, I would like to hear it when we're talking about that topic so we can uh, try to clarify. I'm not here to try to teach. I'm not here to try to impose. I'm just trying to share uh, some of the things that have been working. We have some pilot plans. Uh, the WBC is content, constantly looking into how to make boxing safer and to make it better. We must understand that we have to live up to the current times. The NFL has done a great job moving in using technology to make the right choice, the right decision, the fair decision with instant replay. Uh, baseball is using instant replay. And uh, we're going to talk about instant replay, but that's just one of the topics. We need to understand that we need to make better and we need to make changes to make people and fans get back to, to the sport of boxing. The first one is open scoring. Once you hear open scoring, everybody is afraid and is uh, completely uh, not even willing to listen to what open scoring is. To change anything in life is a real challenge, it's difficult, but we have to understand that there are things that boxing needs. Open scoring, I see two elements. One is transparency. We are always in the, in the light of people saying boxing is corrupt, officials are corrupt, that boxing is a sport where uh, you know who's going to win and the promoters handle and the, the organizations are dirty, blah, blah, blah. This is a great opportunity to put one thing that makes transparency into the sport. After the fourth round, after the eighth round, the scores are announced. They can be announced to the public and to the television and the arena, like in Japan they showed in the, in the scoreboard. Or they can be simply just be given to the corners. That's the main uh, topic of the open scoring. You give the corner, the, 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 act, the current score, of the official from three judges. They have the opportunity to adjust at that time to change the way they're fighting because every fighter thinks he's winning the fight. Most of them, they think they're winning the fight. When that 12 round sounds, they think they won the fight and then they see the score and they could have done something different. So we have done it in eight years, more than 2,000 fights, and the initial concerns were that the, there would be a riot in the arena if they heard the the local boys losing, there has been not one single incident. The other concern was that the, the fans will lose interest. Well, if you see a fight that at the end is a very wide score, regardless if, if there was open score or not, most of the time you know who is winning and, and it's a lopsided fight. So when you see a football game and the score is 55 to 10, that's something that you cannot uh, change. That's the way the score it is. Boxing is the only sport that does not show the score through competition. When you do diving in the Olympics, you get immediately the score. And then you adjust and you can change the level of your next dive. And the other one was uh, people thought that cut men would make the cut bigger if they know how the score was or they would make something. And I have spoken to hundreds of them and no cutman would hurt their own boxer. And if there was one example 25 years ago, we cannot go by that. So open scoring has been working very, very well. Uh, the fighter who is ahead has continued to do what he has been doing uh, to continue winning. And there's many, many instances where the, fight, uh, the fighter who is losing improves and changes the, the course of the fight. Uh, 
The next, is there any questions about open scoring? Now, my, my question is, do the judges that have scoring the fight hear where they're at after the, uh, after the fight? Because I've seen it round. Sometimes they do. Uh, it depends on the language. It depends, for example, in Japan, they show it on the board so they can see it. And that's one thing we, we also, uh, you, you have to make uh, accountable. The officials need to be accountable. We could see in some fights that a judge that is really going separately tries to adjust, but that is not a generality. Uh, we have been trying to improve. We do evaluate every single performance of each official. And it's, it's just a matter, if you try to find uh, flukes, there will be, of course. But what we think this is a, a good thing. The public and the media has appreciated to know where the fight is at. But the judges, sometimes if you're in Japan, you don't hear what they announce. You're in Mexico and you don't speak Spanish. Or It, it all depends on the specific event and the country. Any other questions about open scoring? Okay, we go to instant replay. Uh, we have been using it also for some seven, eight years. We have been working with uh, television companies. And what we do, we have a, a, a monitor on the desk, on the table. And it depends also the jurisdiction where we are at. The ideal world is to form a panel where you have the local boxing commission with one or two persons and the boxing organizations with one or two persons to look at those uh, instances. It is only used for those major uh, actions that change the result of the fight. It is not used for knockdowns, question knockdowns, or for anything that could stop the flow of the fight. We use it in the resting period, and we rely on whatever the television can feed back on the replay. Uh, without instant replay, we have seen the referee in a position he could not see if the cut was from a punch or a headbutt, so he calls it a punch. The fight is stopped, it's over. The fighter is a uh, winner by knockout because it was a punch. But then you have the referee standing in the ring and a full arena, 20,000 people and millions watching on television and then the replay starts playing on television and you see it was a headbutt. If you don't have it in your rules, that you can rely on instant replay, you cannot do anything. If you have it in your rules, and you don't even need to have the whole system of even the monitor, what you see on the screens, you could use that and, and make the right call at the right moment. We have worked with HBO, Showtime. Uh, we did in Argentina. Uh, HBO had the truck, and they allowed one person to be in the truck and be reviewing the actions. And it has been working very, very well. I work with uh, Big Dracolich from Nevada in this fight. Uh, and we were able to get it right. Instead of a disqualification, the fight was resulted in a technical draw. There was a rematch. And then the challenger won the title instead of having been disqualified. Um, headphones for judges. This is a pilot program we introduced this year. Uh, basically, noise canceling advice, uh, I mean devices. I'm sorry for my English, sometimes I get some wrong words. Uh, these headphones, their main intention is to provide aid for concentration. For the ring official, for the judge, it provides a, a uh, system or a feeling of concentration that uh, takes away the crowd, the noise, there are so many, so many arenas that are very noisy. And uh, this was developed by the ring officials and by the doctors. Pilots, when they fly, they use nice noise canceling uh, devices that helps them concentrate. So this has been working all year. We have had a few negative comments. One, we reject immediately because a judge said, I don't like the way how I look. So, I mean, if, if they come with a real uh, complaint, we accept it. But to be, you're not a, a movie star, you're, you're working. If they don't want it yellow, they, okay, we'll make it 
black or whatever. Or we could use the bows, which are $400 a pair. We're using these ones in the testing uh, plan, ideally, then every judge would own their own uh, headphones. The other thing uh, they ha we have heard is that it could be uncomfortable to have them for such a long time. Uh, we are looking into the plugs, but it does not make that same, uh, the noise canceling, it, it captures a, a feeling that you can fully concentrate on the actions. The other thing they have said is that they cannot hear the blows when they land. That's one that uh, has a lot of merit, but we're working with it and we feel very comfortable. We, I like to give an example. Uh, it could be coincidence, but it seems to be very factual. There was a fight, Lucian Butte against Badu Jack. He was in Washington, D.C. And there was, it was a majority draw. Two judges scored a draw. One judge scored it for Badu Jack in a very, I think it's 117, 111. Then we looked into it, and the, the judge who, was, who scored the fight for Badu Jack who you think was sitting behind him? It was Floyd Mayweather and his whole team. So you can imagine what he heard throughout the 12 rounds. The other two judges on the other side, behind them was Butte's promoter and his team, and behind the other judge, it was a Canadian uh, section of the crowd. So it could be a coincidence, but it really has a lot to do uh, some commissions from the USA have accepted to try it out. Uh, we invite everybody to try them, not necessarily only for the championship fights, but four rounds, six rounds, eight round. It could lead into helping the judges concentrate and to get that influence outside from what they hear. If you go to Thailand, you can see promoters putting their staff next to the judges. So the judge is watching the fight, and he, they have three or four persons next to him applauding and screaming every time the Thai boy raises the arm. And then the other guy hits, and nobody says anything. That gives a tremendous influence, even without you knowing it. If you go to Germany, or most countries in Europe, you have the promoter sitting next to the commissioner. So they see all the scores. So the local fighter knows the score during the fight. And those are things that you cannot control. You can control in your jurisdiction, but that's why what we come up with the different rules or procedures, these are to be applied uh, all around the world. Some places are necessary to have it. Some places are just an, an aid. The most important one. I'm very, very happy, very proud of the clean boxing program. We're gonna hear from Margaret Goodman, who is here uh, in a little while. And uh, I'm just proud of Margaret and Vada and the passion they have put into, into making this a reality. The clean boxing program is basically a four-step system that is a reality. And what we're trying to do is, number one, be a teaching, program giving the awareness to the fighters and all involved in boxing. Drugs and performance enhancing drugs are a reality in, in the world, in sports, and in boxing. I trust boxing does not have a, a major problem right now, but it's potentially getting very difficult to handle. Uh, there are people that take uh, supplements that they don't even know what they're taking. Uh, the friend tell them it works, the trainer tell them it works, and it's a potential danger. Because when you, you don't play boxing, uh, when you take something, you could hurt your opponent. And the important thing also is when you take something, you're, you're hurting yourself. Have midterm, long-term effects have kidney failure, liver failure, heart failure, uh, cancer develops, so it's a very sensitive topic, and this has to be done, uh, and the support we get from the boxing community will help. If you all together, 
if we join in and, and keep working and keep drugs away from the sport, that would be a, a great uh, step forward. Uh, we have a, the webinar, she's going to show us a little bit. We have random testing. Every champion and top 15 uh, rated fighter in the WBC is eligible for random testing. Surprise test, out of competition. So that is a, a light that keeps them, they know they can be tested at any time. Any fighter who does not register in the clean boxing program will be taken out of the ratings. So this is a step we have taken. Uh, there's no turning back, and I'm very proud. And we are not the police, but we are for cream boxing and we are for fair play. We have fights that they enroll uh, voluntarily to, to, be, to have the out of competition testing and then the fight testing. And I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot from Margaret uh, on these regards. Next, this is a, a medical monitoring activities that we are introducing to several countries and several states. Basically, there are two. The biggest enemy of a boxer is the weight. Uh, many fighters have a fight, and then they go and they gain too much weight until they have a next fight. So they come down again to a fight, and then they move up. That, that takes, over a period of time, a tremendous toll on the physical of a fighter. And we are putting this form so every gym has a registry of each fighter so they can wait once a month and register what weight they are in, even if there is no fight, just to go in and, and check their weight so we can have a base data for future studies and future recommendations. There's tremendous concern of the fighters who, after the weigh-in, gain too much weight. That's part of it because a fighter who is walking around in a very uh, higher weight than the weight class that he fights on, then there's a, uh, a potential action that we can take. The other thing is the sparring rounds. The, nobody in boxing monitors sparring rounds. And that's where many uh, accidents could happen in the gym. There's proof of fighters fighting 100, 200 rounds to prepare for a championship fight. So you have 10 fights or 15 fights that you have in the gym prior to your fight. There's so many things, so many fighters that are used only as sparring partners in the gym, and they keep getting hit and hit and hit continuously for years, and they don't even fight. So also this is to get base data, and I think uh, this could give the medical experts and the technical experts very good information that could lead to some decisions and tomb regulation uh, regarding weight and regarding uh, sparring uh, rounds. I think uh, it's not coming the next. Basically, the last uh, topic is the, um, I think it's okay, I can, I can just talk about it. The last topic is a system that we introduced which is called the mismatch prevention system. We have been working with BoxRec. Uh, they are a tremendous aid for the sport because the information is there and they do a lot of work and, and you can find a lot of information which is valuable for a decision-making process. We invite uh, promoters, matchmakers, uh, anyone from the promotional side to implement their own prevention system of a mismatch. Reality, you go to a boxing card, you get the bout sheet, and you can pick nine out of 10, who's gonna win the fight? It's just a matter of see how they're gonna win that fight. And that is so dangerous for the fighters, and it's so bad for the sport. The public does not deserve to go to a fight 
and just see uh, a good fighter against a mid-level or low-class opponent. So the promoters can use that to try to change the way boxing is going because it's a reality all over the world. Most fighters are building records and just fighting to keep active and to keep improving a rating. Now, every time we see a good fight, everybody is so happy and we call it the fight of the year. So it used to be that fights were completely leveled, that fighters would go into the ring and prove and win the rating. Uh, this uh, mismatch prevention system also can be used by the commissions. Simply take uh, what the box rec has stars that uh, each fighter has a certain amount of stars, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. If you go to karate, you see black label. No, that's whiskey, sorry. Black, uh, <laughs> how do you call the? Black belt. <laughs> it was a late night last night. <laughs> so you have the black belt you cannot compete against a green belt or a yellow belt. Why? Because you're in two different levels. So what this star system gives you, it's a level. Not necessarily 100%. You can evaluate. You can see where they fought, how they fought. If You know, it just gives you information as a commission to approve a fight or to reject a fight. I think this, this is mostly on the promoter side. They have to understand they need to put better matches because eventually it, it gives them uh, good results. Basically, I just, uh, we are here. I think we have the common goals. We all want safety and we all want justice. Um, the WBC, we don't care how it's called WBC, IBF, WBO, WA. That is not. This is not an ego or power struggle. We want boxing to continue improving. Uh, we want the boxing commissions to work together. I see steps for uniformity and unity. And anything we can do to be part of whatever can be done to make boxing better, we'll be doing so. I would like to thank uh, President uh, Mike Masuli and thank all of you for your time and for your passion for this great sport. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.